I don't know if you saw this, but recently the, um, the Pentagon declassified a lot of UFO footage. If in the next decade, it turns out that alien life is real, how does that affect, change, frame our understanding of the divine? Oh, it greatly impacts it. I, for one, actually happen to believe in <laughs> Listen, I, it's a good waste of space if it's not. Right. Right? I, I, I cannot believe that an intelligent being created the universe, and the universe is bigger than our solar system. We live in the Milky Way. That's our galaxy, right? Inside of a universe. And I'm fool enough to believe that the only intelligent life form is on this planet? I don't believe that. Yeah, I don't believe that. Um, I, I tell you what, that might unify us though. <laughs> we might finally be able to throw this social construct of race out the window, we got bigger fish to fry, you know? It would be like Galileo with his telescope, battling with the church, he's got his telescope, and he's looking out in space, and he says, oh, I see some imperfections in the moon. They don't want that. Oh, I, I, can, I can prove by standing in the town square all day that the sun does not revolve around the earth. The earth revolves around the sun. They don't want that. Why? Again, we have this box that we want to put the divine in. And when science began to prove there are craters in the moon. There's nothing wrong with this telescope. That's what's out there. The sun does not revolve around the earth. The earth revolves around the sun. The church had to kind of do some regress and to think differently about how they interpret God and the journey of being a human being. I think the same would be true if we came to discover there's other life. There's a, there's a movie, Prometheus. Um, I love it. Oh, you've seen it? You've I've seen it. I'm waiting for the second one. Man, and I bring that up because if, if, if that is the case, right, we are just the almost bastard offspring of a higher intelligence, higher race. Do we then understand God as a governor of this quadrant of the universe or this quadrant of the galaxy or this quadrant of the solar system? And, or is it still God is the God of the multiverse? So my, my framework is Christianity and the sacred texts uh, that, that is authoritative for me are the scriptures. We don't have it there. What I think would be extremely profound is to wrestle with what we do have after coming into contact with new information. How do we adjust? What parts of the tradition need to be reevaluated and assessed? One of the things the church is not good at is change. Because we're, so, we're more married to a book than we are the author. And when you talk about, you know, extraterrestrial life and life beyond this planet, and where does God's government and authority begin and end, the scriptures that are given to me allow me to imagine and believe that the God of scripture is not a tribal God. He's not just the God of the Jews or the Israelites. He's not just the God of those who lived in Jerusalem and Judea. He's a God of the world. And by world, I don't just mean galaxy or solar system. God of the world. Um, now, uh, you know, just notions of philosophy and existential reality. How do we explain the world around us? Again, a lot of holes. The secret things belong to God. What is revealed belong to you and I. 
And when God begins to reveal more, how does that change traditions that we've held on to, beliefs that we've held on to? And what do you do with that? I'm sure you've heard about like uh, chat GPT, artificial intelligence. I have. I think, I think we as humans have a history of wanting to be God in our own right. Whether we want to be sovereign over our own household, our city, our town. And as many gods or many aspirants of, you know, divinity, we have tried to create life. Right now we can even um, we can even engineer fetuses with CRISPR Cas9 and, and technology like that. How do we understand or how should we conceptualize the possibility of creating a consciousness that is inorganic? How does that conversation and the and the theological conversation, how does that even happen if we do create robots that think for themselves and have uh, the soul, right, uh, the personality and the whole nine. How, what, what will that mean for our understanding of ourselves and ultimately God? Uh, uh, another brilliant question, man. I don't know where you're getting these questions from, man. but I, 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 my first thought is, uh, I go back to the Genesis text where God says, let us create man in our own image and in our own likeness. That obviously does not mean God has legs and hands, right? That's, you know, kind of being, you know, uh, that, that's not what that means. But a part of it means that there's something within us that's God-like in our DNA. And one of those attributes of God is that he is a creator, an intelligent creator. And that's what we have done. We're always trying to create and advance and be innovative and create the next. They're brilliant minds among us who can look into the darkness of this world and still find hope and optimism. And technology has been one of those things for us. I would say since, you know, the modern age, I guess, you know, back in from the 80s moving forward. So, you know, with this thing of uh, artificial intelligence, you know, I, I have a, a couple of movies that I love. I love The Matrix. I, I love all the Matrix joints. Um, the Will Smith movie, um, I Am Robot. Uh, the, the, I don't think that's the right name, but the Will Smith movie, uh, I Robot or whatever it's called, you know. Um, all of those films are forward in their thinking and forward in their presentations about what's next for humanity. Technology is here to stay. It's not going away. It's going to evolve. We've gone from the Flintstones to the Jetsons. You remember in the Flintstones, they, they start the car with their feet. They had a dinosaur. And in the Jetsons, they were flying around. I mean, we're just, we're just about there now. You know, they're talking to robots and tablets. That was a cartoon. You know, I, I think that that's a part of life. I think it's a part of our evolving as a human species. Again, what does it mean to be a human? And now we've broadened that conversation. What does it mean to be human uh, in close proximity to artificial intelligence? How does that intersect with conversations about the human soul and the afterlife. I saw on the news, this had to have been eight to 10 years ago, they were working on a robot. And the uh, robot looked just like the person doing the interview. And they said, what we're working towards uh, is you will be able to talk to this robot every day, download information, your likeness, and when you die, we can resurrect you in this robot. There's a show about it. Yes. Yeah. Black Mirror. Yeah. Yes. You know, they have shirt. They have they have shirts now that will change colors based upon you know your 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 body heat, your temperature. You know, they have robots that comfort 
elderly people and people with disabilities and post-traumatic stress disorder. It's all around us. Think about what the world was like in 2020 and 2021 without technology. So, you know, I, I think it expands that conversation. It brings certain questions of existence into mind. What does it mean now to create something that will have a conscience and will outlive you and doesn't need your Bible and doesn't need um, the principle of faith, doesn't need things. Not only does it not need rest, it doesn't need hope. 